yes, good evening. And just look at this. Wow, just look at this. Hey, this is at the Bethel Heritage Park again. I was here last night, so I thought I'd take just a little, uh, little something here. And uh, yes, it's, uh, it's a wonderful evening. I mean, this is about as good as it gets. And uh, the tree, up oh, can't see it. <laughs> but uh, it's been an interesting day. Yesterday I was, I guess, a little bit too, uh, too long. <laughs> I found out after a while. I think I was going to stop at about seven minutes and I went 20. But uh, sometimes uh, somebody asked me, it must take a lot of research and a lot of different things to do these podcasts. Well, I don't speak spend a lot of time per se here uh, or before thinking about what I'm going to say. But at the same time, uh, the research has taken place over 73, almost 74 years. Well, let's put it this way, the last 50 at least. When I was uh, uh, before 21, my research went uh, elsewhere. <laughs> or it happened elsewhere. And, uh, and so it's an uh, interesting time. And uh, just uh, uh, today, I uh, started off the morning with the service, memorial service for Brother Abe Funk. And you know what? You can have funerals and big funerals. You can have all kinds of people, and it's all good. But today we had about 20, 25 residents of Cottonwood Wing at the Salem home. And it certainly was awesome to be part of that memorial service. Once I read the obituary of Brother Abe Funk, it uh, was inspiring, encouraging, and humbling. Sometimes we focus on so many things. Things, bank accounts, land, crops, businesses, travels, houses, homes, mansions, all kinds of things that we focus on. And then uh, we forget that the real focus should be on the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And uh, I have uh, continued to try and focus on on that. And uh, so uh, today I so I did that this morning, and uh, it was awesome to be back at Salem. I really hadn't been back at uh, Salem since uh, I think June eighth, when was the last time that I filled in for the then now departed chaplain Wilbert Friesen. And, uh, you know, Wilbert, I'm not sure how many years he was the chaplain there, but uh, out of the group there today, so many of them said, oh, we miss Wilbert. He has since retired and moved to Steinbeck. We miss Wilbert. Yes, absolutely. And uh, that's an interesting, interesting situ situation. But they've hired somebody else, and I'm not sure if it's public yet, so I'm not going to say who it is. But I wish uh, the next person well. And uh, again, I'm always willing to help and to fill in, or at least uh, help out wherever possible. I do want to uh, make it a point of uh, going back in and, and visiting with uh, certain of the residents. And uh, so that's uh, another thing that uh, I want to want to do. But uh, the throne speech was yesterday, uh, the throne speech by uh, the uh, Governor General of, Manit of Canada, and uh, of course written 7,000 pages, written by the Liberal government and their flackies or whatever you want to call it. And uh, again, as I said yesterday, agriculture wasn't specifically uh, 
focused upon other than the taxes they can generate and the carbon tax and different things. And I remember talking to agriculture, former agriculture minister Jerry Ritz. And uh, one of the other sad part of this federal government is that under the Stephen Harper and under Jerry Ritz as Minister of Agriculture, uh, they had uh, negotiated uh, various trade deals around the world. And yes, the Liberal government did sign one of them, but absolutely no action on any of it. And uh, I remember sitting down with Jerry Ritz a couple of years ago, as I mentioned yesterday, in a restaurant in uh, Lloyd Minster, Alberta. Then uh, it, uh, he told me about how he had functioned and how trade had gone from 25 billion, I think it was, to maybe 75 billion in agricultural trade around, uh, around the world. And he said, this was the secret. You know, he would lead these trade missions as the ag minister. And he would be representing a country that had clout in the world as far as agriculture was concerned. And so he would lead these trade missions. And then he would be on, as he put it, on the, on the, ground, on the ground boots running. And, uh, boy, look at that. And so, uh, and the other thing he did in these embassies, he would put people from his own department, from agriculture, that knew agriculture, because most of the trade had to do with farming products. And so he uh, talked about how they've been able to, to do that. And uh, he says, as far as he knows, there's nothing like that going on as far as this federal government is concerned. Maybe nothing is saying a bit too much, but very little. And whatever they kind of do is done, you know, who knows how. Uh, and so uh, listening to Jeff Nielsen, the president and a farmer, grain farmer from Alberta, president of the Canadian Grain growers of Canada and how he gave his speech from the combine and you can s listen to it on uh, my timeline in Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn and uh, and how when when we don't support an industry like agriculture uh, which involves so much research technology policy and all kinds of things. If, if, if you don't have the best interest, number one, of the farmers at heart, secondly, the best interest of Canada at heart, the best interest of customers at heart, then you backtrack, you fall back. And so where other countries are going forward with some of that technology, some of those big companies when they look at things in Canada and where they're at, you know what? They don't want to invest in them. That's what's happened to the oil industry. I mean, Jerry Ritz comes from that area. He knows the oil industry. And uh, basically, uh, it's shut down. It's basically shut down. And uh, yes, and that's what the federal government now wants. You know, they'd rather see fossil fuels shut down than promote it so that Alberta would get the advantage. If Alberta gets the advantage, so does everybody else. And in agriculture, a lot of people don't understand this, but this particular government, they would rather shut down, diminish production agriculture just so they can tell the people at the United Nations and so forth that look at look at what we've done. We really, really cut the 
carbon emissions and all that kind of stuff, not uh, thinking ahead that it's the farmers that really, if they want to go that way, they really take the carbon out of the air because the plants need carbon to grow. And we want to diminish carbon. We use it to breathe, to live. We want to take it away. Well, I, uh, as I said, I wasn't going to be as long as I sometimes am, but uh, it's such a beautiful evening. I'm just sitting here on the park bench, and it looks like <laughs> looks like summer, doesn't it? Look at that. But it's under these beautiful lights. Well, as uh, Cousin Millie uh, texted me, when I said we were under a water boil advisory, oh boy, I don't even know if I've ever had to function under a water boil advisory. But that's what Twinkler has, and, and it looks like we're going to see that for a while, and the pressure is going to be somewhat lower for a while. Well, I'm sure they're on it. They're going to fix it, and we'll be back up and running full tilt meaning the water. So, uh, well, I just, uh, <laughs> it's been such a nice evening, and it is such a nice evening, and uh, the colors continue to look so good, even though I took a trip up through the Pemina Valley, the southern part of it today, whereas the other day I, I took the part from Manitou within 10, 12 uh, miles radius of Manitou and saw some things I'd never seen before. What I saw today of the Pemina Valley Bible Camp and the Pemina Valley Interpretive Interpreta Interpretive Center and uh, just uh, lots of activity in those uh, places and so it's, uh, it's good. Good to see those kinds of things happening and especially you know in, the, in that area. Well, I just uh, want to say that uh, have yourself a great uh, evening. This morning, what I did with uh, the memorial service, I started off with John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. When you go back to chapter 2 in the latter part, where Jesus meets Nicodemus, learned man. We have today so many learned scholars, people that have studied elsewhere, and they now think they know in their own hearts and minds that the Bible isn't true. It's not literal. We don't believe the creation. We don't believe the virgin birth. We don't believe that Jesus was human and God at the same time. But Nicodemus, uh, you know, Jesus was having a conversation with him. And, uh, and finally, he says, well, what must I do? This wasn't the rich young ruler per se. This was Nicodemus. He was the top learned person, and he didn't know. And so when he asked, well, what must I do? to inherit, sorry, I don't have the verse totally exact, but the gist of it is, what should he do? And Jesus says, you must be born again. And even that, you must be born again, is, is almost foreign to many, many people. Oh yeah, change of heart and change of attitude and change of this and change of that. If you're part of the community, you're okay. You know, uh, I have preached and taught and studied, and I'm so happy that I knew from the beginning, from my parents, what it meant to be born again. I didn't accept it until I was 21 years old, but they were still around to experience the fact that I had accepted Jesus and I was born again. And then... Jesus keeps talking to Nicodemus and he finally says, you know what? Uh, 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So that's part of what I wanted to share. And then, of course, I went on to John 14, which is such a great portion of Scripture to speak anywhere. You know, when, when Jesus uh, was challenged <laughs> by Thomas, hey, how do you mean? How are we supposed to know? How, if, we didn't even, we, if we don't know how to follow you, first of all, we don't know where you're going. And then he says, well, there's mansions I've prepared for you. And then he says that verse, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Wow, so awesome. Well, that's it for now. Somewhere, sometime, somehow, I will see you again.